You make that look easy. Oh my God, what an honor. What an honor. Give it up for Kevin Nash, everybody. I have not been nervous for any panel all day, but I have a feeling this is gonna be shenanigans, if you will, and this is gonna go awry, but ladies and gentlemen, please again, make some noise for Kevin Nash. What an honor. You're actually pretty safe because I don't know what the cannabis laws are in the UK. Okay. So I, I travel dry, so I'm too old to drink. So you're, you're getting a, you're getting a, I did watch darts last night though. Oh, thoughts on UK darts. Hey, this guy was over. <laughs> I mean, he, he came out, he came out, it was like a WrestleMania entrance. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, if I had to do it all over again. Give me a little place in Sheffield. Yep. Boom. It could have been really different for you as a I darts bet, player. I bet you could with the with the length I could have got. Is that fair though, in all honesty? I really don't care. You don't care. <laughs> I, make well, the, I want that guy's entrance. It's pretty sweet. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna ask a few questions and fangirl as I always do. You're one of my favorites. And then we have Chris Brooker who has a microphone. Where is Chris Brooker? He's right over here. After we get done with a couple questions here, we're gonna go to the fans, if that's okay, Mr. Nash, and get some questions. Yeah, I'm just, is, is production, is there any way we get a couple more lights on? Yeah, I can't see you. Jesus. Yowzer. Well, how have you been enjoying Manchester so far and for the love of wrestling? I've been coming to Manchester since, uh, gosh, 90. So I've always, I've always enjoyed the city. I haven't been in three years and as I was leaving the airport, I caught my first glimpse of, of the Manchester skyline. And I went, those three buildings weren't here before. I guess there's like this incredible boom and, and all those high rises uh, are apartments They're for, for people for, for living. And they, they still don't have enough, so I guess People in Manchester don't have cable TV. I guess they're putting out kids or something. I don't know. Doing Population's jumping. <laughs> the pandemic was a weird, lonely time, I think. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Well, I have to ask, we have so many great friends that we're seeing, uh, you know, these shows are always like a reunion. Is there anybody here in Manchester at For the Love of Wrestling that you hadn't seen in a while that you're excited to be around again? Or that you were not excited to see? <laughs> no, I, I, most of us are kind of on the circuit. I mean, it's been a while since I've seen Paul. Yep. It's been a while. I mean, um, I saw Bill in L.A. I saw, I, I saw most everybody in, uh, at, at WrestleMania. How did you enjoy L.A.? I'm not a fan of L.A. LA, LA looks like a, a Syrian refugee camp in Jordan. It's like, not that that's a bad thing, I guess, if you have to be in a refugee camp. I said to Mr. Nash in LA, I said, so what do you have planned? And he mentioned something about seeing a friend from Magic Mike. Who here has seen Magic Mike? Why did all the girls nobody, start? Yes, nobody. all the girls got a little shy looking. No, nobody saw it, see? And I told you that I will not watch it because it, <laughs> you're in your skivvies. Why? I don't know. I'm too nervous to watch it. You said it's not that bad? We've I need to showered give it a go. together like 19 <laughs> times. You won't watch my movie? But that's between friends. Now, how was your time working on Magic Mike? Because it really is, you know, super popular. And, and there are now shows all over the world where you can go see Magic Mike on a bachelorette party if you will I still I still think to this day it was a rib when they called me but it, I, it's still one of the biggest checks every quarter so I take the money we've been talking to some of the wrestlers here about uh, their transitions either to or from Hollywood films one of my favorites you were in which I think is one of the best movies The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler. Give it up for that movie, my gosh. 
quite a few of you were in this film. As, as Bill Goldberg was also in it as well. What was your experience working on The Longest Yard? It was strange because it's like the only movie I've ever worked in that was all guys, you know? I think Courtney Cox was on set a couple of days. Cloris Leachman was on set a couple of days. But there were no, it was just all, all guys. Which I would imagine in a prison movie, that's what would be in. So. Well, it was fun. We had a good time. It took forever. <laughs> it, did, it took forever. <laughs> you know, I mean, anybody that's ever done a movie, if you shoot it, if you shoot a, uh, if I shoot this group of people right here, then I got to go on the other side with my camera equipment and shoot it back this way to get coverage. And if it's football, you got to move the whole sideline from one side to the other. If you do that throughout the week, it becomes a long process. For the action shots, that's right. Well, my favorite part of WrestleMania weekend, thanks to you, has been a little thing we like to call shenanigans. We didn't do it this year. We didn't, and I, I've never even talked to you about this. So they asked me years ago if I would host Kevin Nash's shenanigans party and do a midnight fireball shot, which they never told you about. And no. you literally said in your most lovely Kevin Nash voice, nobody told me. I said, we did a shot for you. We raised a glass in the air. It was this beautiful moment. They never told you. But Shenanigans is an annual Kevin Nash party. How did this come about? Whose idea was this? It's got, it had to be Heroes. <laughs> yeah. Had to be Heroes. Heroes' way to make some money. Pay, pay for his WrestleMania. And so. What's your role at Shenanigans? Because usually you're just sort of being worshipped on a lily pad. People are just sort of gathering I just, around. I, I just walk around and, talk, and, and mingle. My job is to... I'm the, I, I, say, I say something. I usually talk for 15 minutes. Yeah. You do. You're kind of like the roast. Everyone just sort of gathers around you and takes pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's how we do it at Shenanigans. Well, speaking of Shenanigans, let's let you guys get in on the conversation. Chris Brooker has a microphone. Please don't be shy. Get those hands in the air. Can I, can Where I is come Chuck to the Mambo? One, can I come to the one next year, sir? Huh? Philadelphia, can I come next year? Oh, he'd like to go to shenanigans. Dude, I, I don't know if I'll be there. I'll do a background check. Don't oh, don't. Worry. Please don't. I work <laughs> don't. in British wrestling. We don't like those. <laughs> yeah. um, joking. Uh, here we go. What's your question, sir? Hi, Kevin. Um, so, um, obviously, you've had, uh, you had quite a lengthy career where you were, first of all, part of the um, WWF and then NWO in WCW and then on to TNA. Well, my question is, um, throughout all that, what did you find was the biggest challenge, biggest difference, and what was your most favorite part of that whole bit? So, so it's a big question. You're asking me what the favorite part of my career was, basically? I mean, every, you know, it's like life. You know, if you ask a mother, when was, when was the best time that she had a, her, a, her child. And she, is, is it at birth? Is it when it learns to talk? Is it when it goes to college? Is it when it gives, it gives the mother a grandchild? They're all, you can't pick one because they're all completely different. It's just the process of your, of your wrestling life. So the, the first time that I got in the ring was live on the Clash of Champions, and that was the night I became a professional wrestler. That was the night I got paid to do it. So that night's very special, but it doesn't even fall into winning the, the WWF Championship in Madison Square Garden in 94. You know, I mean, it just, like hanging out with the, doing, doing those Nazi things with those young guys at TNA. You know, that, that was fun because it, I just, I didn't care anymore. You know, I was done. I just wanted to have fun. And somebody was paying me to go, you know, just to, to mess around, so. Someone recently sent me that video of Paparazzi Idol that's on YouTube when you said that, that infamous quote, you're going to Paducah. <laughs> Do you remember that? 
Give it a Google if you have not seen Paparazzi Idols, some of the most fun we had in TNA wrestling. Mr. Brooker is over here on the right with here another we question. Go. Right, and, and representing the Wolf Pack. Hi, Kev. Uh, what is your uh, favorite memory or moment with uh, The Undertaker? And are you still close with him? My favorite, my favorite uh, moment with The Undertaker was Vince brought us into his office in, in Connecticut and told both of us that we could no longer go to strip clubs. So the next loop starts, and we, the first town is Winnipeg. And Winnipeg had a, we stayed at this kind of a dive hotel, but hooked, hooked onto this hotel was a gentleman's club. So I'm like, I'm not sitting around here all night by, and sitting in my room. I'm going to go to the strip joint because I know like, nobody's going to go. And I walk around, my it takes a minute, and I sit down, I sit back in the corner, it takes me about a minute or two for my eyes to adjust. I look over in the back of the, all the way across the club, I see this long hair. And he just looks up at me, Mark looks up at me and goes, and I didn't know if he was like, I was here first, you have to leave. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself like, well, I know that you were in the same meeting I was. I know I'm not going to tell on you. <laughs> You're not going to tell. So I think we're all right. But what do you, 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 I don't have a wrestling story. <laughs> I, I, I did that in between having fun. Why not? A club for gentlemen. You're a gentleman. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Speaking of gentlemen, go ahead. Hi, Kev. Hi. Uh, which is your most favorite moment when you think about Scott Hall, the one that really makes you smile? That's like him. He, I, I mean, I, I spent 30, I, I spent, spent more of my life with Scott than any human on this planet. So, you know, how do you, you know, how do you pick, how do you, and, and, and I'm talking 24-hour days. Half the time we were working against each other. I mean, there was not a time that we weren't together. From the car to the hotel to the ring, 300 miles that night. Him having to stop and piss every 15 miles. All fun. No, we had just, you know, you, you, you couldn't... Number one, the business, is, the business wouldn't even allow that kind of a bond now because it's so fractioned. But back then, you know, you just, and it was a whole, all of us, we just were on the road and it was, like I, I went back to WWE in like 2011 and then 2014 and all the guys, the top guys had buses and when they got done with their matches, they'd go out and get in a, like a tour bus, and it'd be them and a, and, a, and, a, and a bus driver. And I'm like, I said, so I thought the whole reason that you got into wrestling is so you could get done with a match, get in a car with your buddies, drink beer, and tell each other how great they were for the next 300 miles. I didn't know it was to sit and play video games in the back of a bus. I didn't get the memo, so I don't know. It's hard to get a DUI when you got somebody driving you. That takes, that takes half the sport out of it. These, these new kids in their video, all the X Division guys, always with the video games. I mean, my son played the hell out of video games, but, and I mean, I, he, he, he sucked me into it. We, we, we do this, get a new game and start at eight o'clock and then my, my wife would walk in and she's like, you know what time it is? I have no idea. It's 5 a.m. Yeah. Oh. What so, games did you like? Oh God, we, all first shooters, all those Medal of Honors and Rainbow Sixes and all that. 
Anything we could kill, kill people in. Good old American standards. I want my guns. Lord. Just give me my guns. Lord, no. We have another question here. Mr. Brooker has the microphone. Just raise your hand. Here we go. Hi, Kevin. Um, they've brought LWO back to WWE recently. Would you want to see NWO come back, and who would you want to see head it up? No. When, when Scott Hall died, the NWO died. That's, that's it. It's, now it's a, you know. There was still a chance for the Beatles until Lennon got killed in New York City. And once Lennon got shot, there wasn't going to be the Beatles again. So let some trivia, let some, you know, trivia group play NWO, but. And I, and I know Hulk's, is be, Hulk's more beat up than I am. And we talked a, a couple weeks ago, and he's like, he lives on the beach, and I live on the beach. And it's like, I'm like, how you doing, it, brother? <laughs> doing this karaoke on Mondays at my beach hangout. <laughs> got, got, I got Nick as a training partner. I, ain't got him, I don't got to move five feet. I'm like, good for you, man. Knobs is running around yeah. somewhere, causing yeah. chaos. Yep, sounds Did, about right. Just a, let's not, not bury the lead. Hulk Hogan does a karaoke night. Yes. Yeah. How many Holy places does he have in Florida? He's got like three. Daytona, That's Orlando amazing. Shop, no, Fairwater. Day Daytona's not, uh, uh, right. it's gone, yeah. He, no, he just has a, the, I think it's just like, he, he's got the store still, I think, in, in Orlando, but it, it's just Hogan's hangout is in Clearwater. Look for it on TripAdvisor. Yes. Right, this uh, gentleman here, what's your name, hey, my buddy. friend? Oli. Hey, Owen. Um, Kevin, who was your toughest opponent? That Goldberg guy sitting over there was pretty oh. tough. Hi, Goldberg. <laughs> They're all tough. They all want to make it look good. They lay it in. Good question, Owen. Oh. Thank you. Gentleman in the hat here. Hi there, it's Kevin. Um, a question for you is, um, before you got into wrestling, who was your favorite wrestler? Or what wrestler inspired you? I, I, I thought Hogan was the, uh, like the guy. He was the man like, during, during that time. I didn't grow up watching. I was a, I was a basketball player, so I really didn't watch wrestling growing up. I never had any. I didn't grow up saying, "Oh, I want to be a wrestler." I wanted to. I wanted to be on TV at one o'clock last night here, watching the Golden State Warriors get their ass beat. <laughs> but my Lakers did close out the. Memphis Grizzlies, so went 25-85. I'd be like you guys give me some football scores. Does, Manche does Manchester play a home game tomorrow? It's tomorrow, yeah. Don't say boo, aren't we in Manchester? How does that make any sense? Oh, Liverpool. It's complicated. It sounds my, very complicated. My uh my, my podcast partner is a Liverpool guy. Huh. Do you have a team that you support? Do I have a team I support? Over here. Who does, who does uh, Tony Khan's dad own? <laughs> Which one does he own? Fulham. Who? Fulham, Fulham I guess. They're my favorite. <laughs> They're Kevin Nash's favorite. That's the only way. That's the only way I'm going to make any money out of it. But if it is, if it's got a wrestling connection. I'm, I'll, I'll, work, I'll work that gimmick. <laughs> that's fair. Look for that headline tomorrow. Yes, we've got a question right here in the middle. I'll play goalie. 
Um, right, thank you very much for coming to Manchester. Um, huge fan of the Click This podcast. It's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, yes, it is. And um, basically, um, I love seeing you in The Punisher and John Wick. It's nice to see you in there. Would you ever return to John Wick if they offered it to you? And which was your favourite album? Nah, Punisher man, John I'd Wick? never go back to this highly successful franchise film. With... <laughs> Rather do voiceover on Cartoon Network. Yeah, no, I, I always, I always thought like. I'm the only person that didn't die, you know? I guess maybe that's a good thing. Maybe just leave it at that. <laughs> and maybe, my, my, maybe my next death will be grisly. I'm just blessed to be in it at all, you know? Those checks aren't bad. Not great, but not bad. You didn't hate them. You can definitely take four or five people out to dinner with drinks. Like Applebee's? Lots of drinks. Like a Ruth's Chris or like Applebee's? No, more high, 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 What's high. What's the barometer? When everything on the menu says MP. Okay. <laughs> Ooh la la. Yeah, the, mar the market price. <laughs> you got to ask, you shouldn't be in here. We have a question over here on the uh, right-hand side. It's going that here. way. Oh, all the way behind us. Yep, go ahead. Hi, Kev. Um, again, I am a big fan of the Click podcast, like you and Sean. Excellent banter. Thank I you. was wondering, uh, what were the favorite ribs you witnessed uh, when you were in the Click and when you were in NWL? There's kids in the crowd, so I got to re really, really be, ca be careful what I. Can I plead the fifth? Yeah, I can plead the fifth, man. I'm American. That's what we do, right? Like a congressional hearing. Here's one for you. So, not to be political in any form or fashion, because that's just not my bag. But, so we got this guy named Ron DeSantis down in Florida. And, uh... He's our governor, and July 1st, he's passed a law where everyone in the state can carry a concealed weapon without a permit or to be trained to fire it at all. So expect a mass exodus to the UK from Florida. <laughs> because one thing we definitely don't have in the United States of America, we just don't have enough damn guns. I don't know if any, I mean, I, I watch your guys' news today, you know, and it's like, it's completely different because you know, you guys have this strike going on with the union, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Detroit guy, and I'm thinking to myself, they got a 2% raise like two years ago, they're, they're looking at a 4% raise, which isn't bad, but then the inflation is so high here that it's, you can't, and then they went right from that to basically saying that it's so hard for the, 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 the most people that live in the UK to choose between feeding their families and heating the homes of their families. And it's just like, and our country's the same way, you know, and, but they're sitting in, in, in Washington right now and the Republican Party is trying to negotiate with Biden on a budget that the money's already been spent. So in other words, we've already spent $2 trillion, it's gone. But you and I wanna come in here and put a debt limit on a debt that's, it's like, I say to myself, if I would've known at 63 years old 
that the pro wrestler would be the smartest guy in the room? Wow. Maybe I would have took a handful of pills. Yeah. Oh, wait, I did. Or, <laughs> or played darts. It just didn't kill me. <laughs> Taking that darts route. Where is Mr. Brooker? I mean, I feel, I feel like if you're announcing your candidacy, we're, we'll support you. We're, we, we, we got Vote your Vote Nash. Four more years. I, um, it, I, you know, it'd be so hard now because like, our labor unions, man, they're just, they don't stick together anymore like they used to. You can, you can break, the, you can break the, a union like it's, teacher unions used to be unbeatable. I mean, everybody that's, Every, the corruption so much they just they pay enough of the of the higher ups and they just they break the labor they, they break the labor down it's a damn mess uh, to put it mildly I believe it I, 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 there was a lady here a, a little while ago named Thatcher that didn't do the labor unions any good not that I recall I mean I kind of recall well, I'll tell you, I believe you have this gentleman's vote and a question. So, uh, hi, Kev. Um, What's up? I believe it's, it's pretty well known how close you are to Triple H. Um, did you always see that success coming from him? And do you think that the Madison Square Garden incident with the curtain call spurred him on to become the success he became? No, he was, he was a... Uh, he was such a student of the game early. Uh, and I remember when, like, our careers were kind of ending, and even Paul had had some injury problems. But he already had, like, the vision for NXT because he had the foresight to know that the talent would have to always be, you know, replenished. But he had the foresight to, for the people in the truck because shooting professional wrestling with a camera crew and, and putting it into a truck and, and, and making that work is not like... Like when, we, when WCW was on top, we still had guys that on Sunday would shoot NASCAR. So basically they've got the complexity of cars driving around a circle for 500 miles and then they come the next night Monday and they've got to film us uh, you know wrestling so Paul you know with NXT he, he basically set up production so now that when these when people retire or in the case now when they've got to cut um, 50 million dollars from the, the company, you know, the people that are gonna that, that, that make a, a, a ton of money, there's people to, to take their place, you know, so it's not not great for them. But as far as having the foresight, I mean, I I didn't, you know, he wasn't planning to marry Stephanie, so until he did. Which was good for us. <laughs> Worked out okay. <laughs> Another question over here. On the here we go. Out of all the modern day wrestlers now, if you can have a match with them, which one would it be and why? Roman Reigns. <laughs> He's been a champion for almost a thousand days. There's nobody else that matters but him. He's the only legitimate guy right now. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna go out there and, and, and definitely feel really bad the next day, I'll feel good. I'll, I'll do it with him. Just, just a thought. Maybe Madison Square Garden, kick him in the stomach, jackknife him. No, because I don't want, I don't want those belts. I don't want to, I don't want to want to take him back to the back curtain. Going through airport security, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll say right there, I'll go, I'm sorry, best two out of three. 
Yeah, perfect. So, uh, just another question over here. Thanks for your time, Kev. Um, sure, man. Of all the promoters you've worked for over the course of your career, what sets Vince McMahon apart from the rest? What was the last? Was the last? What sets what, Vince McMahon apart from the rest? What sets Vince McMahon apart from the rest? It's really hard to outwork a human being that doesn't require sleep. And that's the truth. It functions two, three hours of sleep. It's unbelievable. He's a machine. He's like Kobe Bryant. He's the first one to practice and the last one to leave. You'll just never outwork Vince. If I was 76, 78 years old, whatever he is, and I just sold a company that I paid a million dollars for, for $9.3 billion, I don't think I'd be at SmackDown next Friday. <laughs> Call me lazy. <laughs> like, nah. We have time for two more questions. If that's two okay. more. Yes. I, I, I'm in no hurry because I mean, I... so we got one over here to your left, sir. Yep. And then... All the way to the left. Hi, Kev. Um, uh, I'd like to know, like, how Scott Hall um, affected your career. Like, how did he help your career? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, Scott broke in. Um, I want to think maybe '84, like in Kansas City. So Scott had like. When we hooked up, Scott had already been in the business like six, seven years. So, you know, he just, you know, and he, he worked everywhere. He worked Germany for auto. He worked Puerto Rico. He worked Japan. So he was just smart to work Mexico. He was smart to just, you know, all the different territories. And so, yeah. And he was just, he was a big, he was a, he was a lot bigger than people think he was, you know, but he could, he could work like a big man and he would tell me, you know, he taught, he, he made me work like a big man, but not where I didn't sell. Like I, I bumped. So he said, if you don't bump, you won't draw money. You know, you got to get up and down. So I was like, all right. So. Thank you. Great question. Wonderful. Maybe time for two more then? Is that okay? Two more? Kev? Well, yeah. you're ready. Two more. We're ready. Let's no do pressure, it. No pressure, no pressure. Hi, Kev. Hey, man. Uh, so, the Steiners and Outsiders rivalry is what got me into wrestling. What's the most, what's your favorite tag team rivalry? What was the first one? Favorite tag team rivalry. When we first came over to WCW, we were with Harlem Heat, and we matched up good. We had really good matches. I don't think we ever had, I don't think Book and Stevie and Scott and I ever had a bad match. You know, just, because it was like Stevie and I could do our big man stuff, and Scott and, and Book could do their athletic wrestling stuff, so. It was a nice, it was a good, real good, strong combination. And every, everybody, like, they put us over, we put them over, it didn't matter. You know, so it was, it was good. I've got another photo op. <laughs> He's checking out the schedule on the big screen. We'll only do one more question, one final question no, right, right over here. <laughs> here we go. Thanks for coming, Kev. It's been uh, great listening to you. Um, during the Monday Night Wars, um, when you was with WCW, is there any WWF um, segment or match that you wish you were a part of? Okay, so what, when, when I was with WCW, is there anything that the WWF did at that time? Yeah, I wish I could have... If I could have just got through that corrugated steel door when they were out there in their army fatigues. If I could have just got, if I could have walked from Nitro onto Raw, 
That would have been I, I, that. That would go down probably, maybe a step above the curtain call. Because that would be, there'd be legal ramifications, but they, we could act. We could just do the. Oh, I'm sorry. We shouldn't have went out there. But they they weren't gonna let. As soon as they knew they were out there, they had us. They wouldn't let us move anywhere near where WWF was. Great question. Well, final question for me, Kev. What are you looking forward to after Manchester? What do you have going on personally, professionally? What's next for you? Um, uh, Wednesday, I have an MRI. And I'll send the uh, results of my MRI down to Columbia. And I'm going to go down for my third round of uh, stem cell treatment down in Columbia. Um, that's it. And, and you can't drink booze for like 30 days after you get stem cells. So probably after the MRI, I'll probably have a maybe a two, three day bender before I get out of Columbia. <laughs> Give me a call. Has anybody here <laughs> traveled to Colombia? Carlito's actually going to Colombia. He just mentioned that. There's Carlito over there. This is just for the gentleman and just, just kind of like an uh, Anthony Bourdain kind of cliff note. I don't care if you work out or not. Just go into any gym in any major Colombian city and stand behind where the stair climbers are. Good advice. He's leaving you some saying, words of wisdom. Saying, I'm just saying, it's if you're wondering for a reason to live, that alone, if that should be your bucket list. All these idiots that want to go to Antarctica, or go to Easter Island, or Galapagos, no. Go down to Colombia. Go into a gym about 5.45. That and the walking lunges alone is just... <laughs> a sight to behold. Well, before we let you go, Kev, do you or do you not want to hear my Kevin Nash joke? I would love to hear your Kevin Nash joke. I, I'm, I, now, I'm, an, I'm an, under no uh, pressure... <laughs> To laugh, correct? No one is under pressure to laugh. All right. I've said this at shenanigans before. Why do you not like candy? Why does Kevin Nash not like candy? It's too sweet. Uh... I'm getting booed in Manchester. That is pathetic. We cannot end on that note. Do you know how that came up, the whole too sweet thing? <laughs> no. I was out with my wife and another couple, and they both got margaritas. Oh. And both, I said to my wife, how was it? And then the, the girl that was with her, she went, too sweet. <laughs> and it became a joke on how she said it. So one night we were out there and we just, I just, and I said it in her voice. I used to always say it. I used to say, too sweet. That's way cooler. Yeah. And I, I mean, like, it, that was just for her. But that was Scott and our, that was our, our MO was, we would say something on TV and everybody would go, I don't know what that means. No, because that was for our buddy Chuck. That was for one person. It was for nobody else. We did it for that. It was live TV. We don't like it. Made you laugh, right? So there you go. That's, I made Chuck happy. <laughs> All for Chuck. That's right. See, my, if I didn't tell my horrible joke, you wouldn't have heard that cool Comic Con exclusive story. <laughs> and, but, just, and just because Chuck, Chuck was a connected mobster in Staten Island, had nothing to do with it. Hey. <laughs> and we happened to be in New York that night. <laughs> and none of the clubs closed. Clubs for gentlemen. Well, we can't end on that note. Can you please just uh, any final words for your fans here in Manchester before we let you get back to the autograph area? Uh, 
final words. You know what? Okay. So as we get older, you know, like, it doesn't matter where you're at in life. I'm going to be 64 in July. And when I did Magic Mike, they did all these shots for Vanity Fair. And they did five, some with all five dancers, some with three, some with just Channing. And I said to myself, I'm going to be on the cover of the Hollywood Reporter, Vanity Fair. I'm, I, I'm going to be on the, a, a billboard on Sunset Strip. Like, this is, this is epic. I, I, I walk through the airport. I see the Vanity Fair. Pick it up. Channing's the only one on the cover. Walk over. Look at the Hollywood Reporter, Entertainment Weekly, all those. It's, it's Joe, um, Matt, and Channing, but not me and Adam. And I was just absolutely crushed. I was absolutely crushed because I was just like, like, and I said to myself, you know, at that time, like, but in retrospect now, it doesn't matter how, like, you can be, be on an epic rise but it's like none of us ever get that, like there's so few of us that get that brass ring. We just don't get it. And as you get older, you start to, you start to lose that zest for it, that zest to chase it. And that's what you can't do. The, the fact that you're not doing what you wanna absolutely do in life, all of us in this room right now are so much luckier than anybody that's in Kiev. I promise you that, you know? And it's just like, be happy with what you got because it could end tomorrow. <laughs> and with the price of electricity, those stair climbers might get shut off. <laughs> Thank just, you, just, Kevin Nash. Just Ladies and gentlemen, what a way to end things here in Manchester. Two-time WWE Hall of Famer and my favorite. Keep it up going for Kevin Nash, everybody. Show him some love here in Manchester. Thank you.